The third round of the 1950 Formula One World Championship took place on June 4th in Switzerland at the Bremgarten Circuit. The length of the track was 7.28 kilometers, while the drivers had to complete 42 laps. After two convincing victories in the first two rounds of the championship, the Alfa Romeo team arrived in Switzerland as the undisputed Grand Prix favorite. Once again, the cars are positioned in rows of two and three. In P18 on the seventh row, we see Harry Schell once again, but this time he's behind the wheel of a Talbot Largo, racing for his father's team, Ecury Blue. Moving up to P17, we have a newcomer on the grid, Swiss driver Tony Branca. Branca, who has participated in several non-championship Grand Prix, hasn't yet achieved significant results. Today, he's piloting a 1938 Maserati 4CL for the team Achille Varzi, replacing Alfredo Pian. At P16 is Louis Chiron. Unfortunately, it looks like he's not in his best form, having qualified rather poorly in the official Maserati entry. P15 marks the start of the sixth row with Nello Pagani. Due to injuries sustained by Gonzalez, Scuderia Achille Varzi has brought in Pagani, a seasoned motorcycle racer with several victories under his belt to drive for them. Just a few places ahead in P14, we find Johnny Claes with his Talbot Largo, representing Team Belgium with determination. P13 is occupied by Raymond Summer. He's shown a lack of pace in qualifying driving a Model 166, but F2 version. At P12, we have another debutante, Italian driver Felice Bonetto, a seasoned competitor in various motorsport disciplines like endurance racing. Bonetto brings a wealth of experience to Scuderia Milano, which is also making its debut today. In P11 is another Swiss driver, de Graffenried, of the Swiss team Enrico Platé, skillfully handling a Maserati. Veteran Louis Rosier takes P10, driving for the official Talbot team. With three cars in the race, they are hopeful for a podium finish today, especially after missing the race in Monaco. P9 sees another Talbot driver, Frenchman Eugene Martin, ready to make his mark. Prince Bira is back in the top ten, securing P8 with his Maserati from the Enrico Platé team. Leading the Talbot team and in P7 is the experienced and renowned French driver, Giraud Cabantus. Surpassing the official Talbot cars, another notable French driver, Philippe Etancelin, impressively places his privateer Talbot in P6. Ferrari is proving to be a formidable force, with Italian driver Alberto Ascari in P5. Ferrari leading the best of the rest against Alfa Romeo. In P4 is another Italian, Luigi Villaresi, driving a Ferrari. Starting the front row, dominated by Alfa Romeo, we have Italian Luigi Fagioli in P3. In P2, one of the stars of the moment, Giuseppe Farina, is poised for success, and securing his second pole position is the Argentine ace, Juan Manuel Fangio. It seems this year's championship might boil down to a thrilling battle between him and Farina for the title. Final technical checks before the start of the Swiss Grand Prix in Bern. In the past, we note two novelties, the Argentine driver, Fangio, and the new Madame Bira. At the start, Ascari on Ferrari tries in vain to overtake the Alfa Romeos. Fangio is in the lead, followed by Farina, Ascari, Fagioli, and Villoresi. After three laps, Ascari has an oil fault and will abandon the race on the fourth lap. Giro Cabantus in the Talbot spins and has to drop out. By the tenth lap, Farina is ahead of Fangio. Fagioli narrowly avoids hitting Branca, who had spun. The Talbot of Martin goes off the track, who fortunately is not seriously injured. Fangio is out, Farina and Fagioli are in the lead and cross the finish line almost together. Farina wins the Swiss Grand Prix with an average speed of almost 150 kilometers an hour. Giuseppe Farina clinched his second victory of the 1950 championship 
a race he mostly controlled from start to finish. Luigi Fagioli, capitalizing on others' retirements, secured another second place. He nearly caught up with Farina, who, without his main rival on track, was conserving his car. Completing the podium, Louis Rosier achieved an excellent third place. Now driving for the official Talbot team, he earned Talbot's first podium in the championship. In P4, we have Prince Bira, marking his highest finish so far in a race. Felice Bonetto made a remarkable debut, scoring points in his very first race and with a new team in Formula One, Scuderia Milano. P6 went to de Graffenried, with both Enrico Platte and Maserati's finishing the race. P7 was claimed by Nello Pagani, another newcomer who achieved a positive result in his debut. P8 saw Harry Schell finishing three laps behind the leader with his Talbot. After failing to complete even a single lap in Monaco, this was a significant improvement for him. In P10, Johnny Klaas had another successful finish, although once again towards the end of the pack. P11 was occupied by Tony Branca, who struggled with a very old Maserati model. Considering it was also his F1 debut, it wasn't a bad performance. All remaining drivers did not finish, with a noteworthy mention for all three Ferraris and Juan Manuel Fangio, who unfortunately had to retire the car while in second place, losing out on six potential points. Eugene Martin suffered an accident was sent to the hospital, and although he is okay, he sustained facial injuries. Giuseppe Farina currently leads the Drivers' Championship with a total of 18 points. Luigi Fagioli, now in second place with 12 points, has yet to show the pace to challenge Farina and Fangio, but he consistently achieves what's essential in car racing, finishing the race. Juan Manuel Fangio is in third place with nine points. Alberto Ascari and Luis Rosier are now tied for fourth, each with six points. Prince Bira follows closely with five points. In seventh place, Louis Quiron and Parnell are tied with four points each, with a notable mention that Parnell has only participated in one race for Alfa Romeo. At the lower end of the table, we have Cabantus and Summer, both with three points, and Felice Bonetto with two points. When analyzing the average pace percentage of the various constructors competing this year, it's evident that Alfa Romeo is in a league of its own, giving no quarter. Ferrari is emerging as the second strongest team on the grid, followed by Maserati. Talbot, the leading French constructor, is slightly behind this Italian trio. The British era and Alta cars, along with the French Simca Gordini, are still struggling to keep pace.